I had a viewer request um, to look at a um, analog to analog transmission through an optocoupler, have an isolation for an analog to analog signal. Now, I talked about optocouplers once before, and I did a test of the linearity of the uh, device. And of course, this is an LED, so it's a diode, so it's going to have a curve. So if you, if you input voltages on this side and look at voltages on that side, it'll, it'll, it'll follow a curve, so it's not going to be, it's not going to be linear from, from one side to the other. So, so this is a circuit that I have hooked up right now on the breadboard. I'm going to have a voltage coming in, and I'm going to buffer it. I'm going to run it through the LED and uh, with a load resistor to ground, which is 1K. Uh, and then uh, it's going to go through the optocoupler and go on the other side. This is wired as an emitter follower. And you can either put the resistor on the high side or low side, depending on what you want to do. Most of the time you see it on the high side, but I'm doing it this way because if I have a voltage going up on this side, it will also go up on this side, right? Because it, it's, a, it's a follower, so it's an optocoupler follower. Um, and uh, yeah, so we can uh, have everything in phase, which, which will be nice. So I am going to input a signal on the input here. Let me show you that. Uh, here is my circuit. We don't care about that. Uh, but here is the waveform. Okay, I'm going to put in a nice triangle. So it's a real pretty looking triangle, right? All right, so that's what's going into the optocoupler. Let's take a look at what's coming out. Uh, let's see, this is out here. And you can see that it's no longer pretty. It's got a little droops at the bottom. And, and, and that's the diode curve, right? That, that, that's the diode curve, right? All right, so how can we fix this? Let's, let's go back to our diagram. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to put feedback path all the way to the output. So this is our input, this is our output. So we take that voltage that's on the output, and we're going to feed it all the way back to the op amp. Now the op amp wants to have the plus and the minus always the same. And uh, so if this is wiggling up and down, it's going to make the minus wiggle up and down the exact same amount. And that's way over here now. So this, this feedback uh, fixes everything. Let me take this off, and I will put in that feedback path over here. So now we have this nice feedback. And uh, let's take a look. And we've just made it an oscillator. <laughs> so, yeah, look at that. Yeah, we've just made a really nice oscillator. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right. So, um, all right, we saw that oscillation. So um, by putting a 0 0.01 microfarad cap uh, here in the circuit, it, it dampens that oscillation out. So uh, uh, we need to add that to keep everything stable. It's going to slow down the response time of the system, but uh, keeps it from oscillating. So uh, there's quite a delay between uh, input and output. And make it nice and big again. And look at that. Now we have nice straight lines, okay? We have nice straight lines. All right, so let's, uh, let's input a little bit bigger signal here. Let's put in a two volt signal. Yeah, there we go, that looks pretty. All right, so that's what we now have. We have a very linear system, okay? By putting in, by putting in that feedback, all right. Okay. Now we need to fix the problem of this wire. This wire goes across the high voltage boundary. We have a wire going from the high voltage side to the non-high voltage side, and we need to figure out some way of getting rid of that wire. All right. Does anybody do this today? No. What will everybody do today? They'll digitize it. They'll send it over fiber optic link, and then they'll undigitize it, right? So they'll they'll just send it across as digital bits, and they'll take a they'll A to D it and D to A it, and send it across as as a serial data stream, and everything's everything's fine and dandy. That's what will be done today. All right. I don't know if anybody would do this other thing today. Anyway, let's redraw our um, 
our system here. Okay, we've got one of these. All right. And um, we want to keep isolation here, okay? But we want to have this voltage to go into our feedback, okay? We have this, we have this op amp here, and we want to have that feedback come from here, but we can't do that, all right? So what we're going to do is the next best thing, okay? We are going to put a second, uh, a second optocoupler. Okay. So this is one optocoupler. Here's a second optocoupler. All right. And we are going to do the same thing with it. We are going to drive it in series. Okay. Uh, I had a resistor down here. Okay, so we're going to drive this optocoupler, then we're going to drive this optocoupler, all right? And you can see that these two guys should act the same. If they're the same part, they should act the same. So if we take the feedback from this point, it should be the equivalent as taking the feedback over here if these are matched devices. So everything stays on this side of the line, everything's going to be happy on, on that side of the line. And this system should work and take care of what we just saw, right? So let's let's hook this one up. I hope this one makes sense. My drawing's a little ugly here. All right, so with my circuit, I actually have two optocouplers. And so we're gonna go through this optocoupler, and then we're gonna go through the second optocoupler. And previously we were looking at the left optocoupler. Now we're gonna be looking at the right optocoupler which is the one that's totally isolated. And it is completely linear as well, because the two match. Um, yeah, so that is pretty cool. Now, uh, I saw this idea online somewhere and forgot where I got it from, but I, I, I found it again. And so I want to talk about two different things. I want to talk about the place that I found it. We'll look at that schematic and what that guy did. Um, interestingly enough, he also, he also found out he had to put in the magic 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor. He came up with the same value I came up with, so I was kind of proud of myself about that. Um, so yeah, he used, the, the, he used a 0 0.01 here as well to kill that oscillation and put it in the same place that I put it in. So yeah, you know, pat myself on the back. Um, and so we'll take a look at his circuit. He has a couple adjustments here, which uh, we maybe will take a look at. And then um, I want to talk about a different way to do this. So this, this idea was thought about on the ancient days of optocouplers. And uh, I think the first mention of this was back uh, at the place I used to work, the Hewlett Packard Optoelectronics Division. They were one of the first companies to build optocouplers because they were building LEDs. And, anyway, um, and there was an application note, and I believe there's still an application note at Keysight. Uh, uh, became, so it went from Hewlett Packard to Avago, and then Avago to Keysight, I think. Maybe Avago still has it. Maybe it went from Avago to Broadcom. Broadcom, yeah, all these companies confuse me. Um, so maybe it's at Broadcom now. Uh, we'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at that um, and uh, see what they had to say. Uh, all right, this is that circuit that I found that I just breadboarded. Um, it has the two optocouplers in it. And um, it has, the only thing different is that it, it has a variable resistor here and it has a variable resistor here. Um, that allows you to change the transfer ratio and the transfer ratio balance. So uh, those are the only things missing out of my circuit, otherwise they're identical. Um, and like I said, he found this 0 0.01 uh, himself. And he's using a single ended op amps, uh, 358s. I was using TLC 272s, which is a fancy version of that one. You can use either one. Um, here's an old data sheet or app application note from the old HP days and from now it was Avago. Uh, now this problem has existed for a long time and people have wanted to solve it. So they built this part, 
which is one LED and two photodiodes. They're not phototransistors, they're photodiodes, and that allows you a little more flexibility in the circuit that you build, and you can speed it up and, and things like that. But So this is an H... CNR 2001, 2000, or 201 to 200. Um, and then there's some circuits that are a little bit interesting. Um, I would say, you know, you can read that one, but uh, Vichet did a very long app note on uh, linear linear uh, amplifiers using an IL300, which is this, which is the same part. So one photodiode and two two photo um, photodiodes. So. LED and photodiodes, and then they talk a lot about. I mean, this is a pretty thick, uh, pretty thick document. They have uh, ways of taking, take driving the LED and then taking this photo current and feeding it back around. So they have a feedback path here. These two photodiodes are matched really well, so you do that over on this side, and then these two, these two circuits match. Uh, they have a whole bunch of math that you can go through. Uh, you can make it fancier with more things. Uh, yeah, you can uh, make it make it fancier. You can make it make it fa fancier. Uh, yeah, they have a whole whole bunch of circuits in here that you can that you can play with. Um, so anyway, I'll try to put a link down below of all this stuff. So a really good application note on using these odd parts. I don't have any of these. I've never played with these before, so I'm not going to talk about them. I would not be very instructive because I've never used them before. Um, so that's those. And uh, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to, uh, as part of my series of little PC boards, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to lay this one out uh, as a board that you can get and uh, play with yourself if you want to do uh, a linear optocoupler. So yeah, the next next uh, part two will be me laying out a board for this thing.